Hey there, Trapper Jack here. Uh, do we do an episode today or not? I mean, it's a holiday and everything, and we weren't sure. Do we take the day off, not take the day off? If you're outside the country today, it's Independence Day as I post this. Fourth of July. Uh, it's celebrating the big victory back in 1776 when we took on uh, the Vikings. Big upset. Overtime game. Huge, huge game. And so we've been celebrating ever since. So, you know, I got burgers on the grill and fireworks coming up later. So, you know, I got, you know, I just felt we had to do something, right? So, so look at the title of this episode, Freedom's Ring. Freedom's Ring. It is the greatest lost wedding ring story ever. And uh, I just found out about this. My son showed me this yesterday. I thought, well, let's do that then. Let's do, do a little something with that, tell this story. It's an incredible touched by heaven moment here on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Enjoy. This is Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide. And we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention, inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, big and little God incidents. This is not a typical episode. I am your typical host, Trapper Jack. Welcome, so glad you're here. Episode 65, Freedom's Ring. This, this is such a great story. I don't have a guest on this one. This is gonna be kind of a shorter episode, but it's just such a wonderful story and I just got this story. It's my favorite story of the week. That's all. And so I wanted you to hear it. You'll see God's hand in it. You'll see that he's maybe saying something personal to somebody. This is like the greatest lost wedding ring story ever. It's a touched by heaven moment from space. And the odds of this, ha the odds that this isn't God, let's put it that way. God's hands are all over this thing. It, it, the, the, the odds of this not being God is about 80 bazillion zillion to one. And you know how many zeros are in a bazillion zillion? I'll tell you how many. A bazillion zillion. That's how many. It's a lot. It's a lot. So 4th of July uh, weekend as we uh, post this. So it's, it's not typical. And we're hardly taking the week off. We're not. In fact, we're drowning in stuff that we're doing because we're upgrading three websites and we're getting ready for some e-commerce. And it's just, uh, yeah, a lot of things going on. But we still want to post something. And this is the coolest story. And it's shocking. I don't know this story. It is. My son, Steven, sent it to me yesterday. He said, bet you don't know this story. I went, whoa. And the fact that later this month, the 50th anniversary of, our, of that first moon landing, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and all that. Does the name Ken Mattingly ring a bell with you? If you saw the movie Apollo 13, Ken Mattingly was the astronaut who didn't get to go on that ill-fated Apollo 13 space ride that, that exploded and darn near killed everybody, but somehow, miraculously, literally a miracle that those guys, they, 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 got, they got back. And Ken Mattingly... Uh, didn't get to go because he was exposed to German measles. And since he hadn't had it, it was like, well, he might get it while he's in space. And they pulled him with like 72 hours before launch. They pulled him. He was so ticked. Everyone was so ticked on that program. But they had to do what they had to do. And as it turned out, it was a blessing because he played such a key role in helping the guys get back with his scientific know-how and all. He was very involved in, in the guys getting back. So, but Ken Mattingly also... Um, let's see, in 1982, oh, it was on the 4th of July, too. On the 4th of July, 1982, Ken Mattingly was coming back on a shuttle mission on Columbia, landed at Edwards Air Force Base, and was met by the president and his wife, Ronald Reagan and Nancy. So that was pretty cool for him. But in between those two incidents was the touched by heaven incident, Apollo 16. Ken Mattingly aboard, finally got to go into space. He was the command module pilot, which meant, sorry, you don't get to go down to the moon. Uh, he got to be the guy that go round and round and around the moon, you know, while the other two guys go down onto the moon. So his cohorts on this mission, Charlie Duke and John Young. Okay, so the three of them are on their way to the moon. On day number two, Ken Mattingly lost his wedding ring. It was in this like little bag uh, for personal items, small personal. Somehow it floated out of there and it floated who knows where. 
He's only been married a couple of years at this point, got married in 1970, and he's lost the wedding ring, and it's floating around somewhere, landing somewhere. He's looking for it. The other two guys are looking for it. They can't find his wedding ring. So in his off time, when he's not doing experiments and work and all that, he's looking for the wedding ring. The other guys are trying to help him too, but they can't find the wedding ring. That starts on day two. Now they get to the moon, and down go the two astronauts, Young and Duke, and they're down there three days. So up there, circling the moon, is Ken Mattingly. And he's doing all these experiments. He's got a ton of experiments, but, uh, but still looking for the wedding. Can't find the wedding. Where's the wedding ring? <sighs> okay, back come the two guys. They reconnect, and they start heading back to Earth. We're now on day nine. It's been a week that this wedding ring has been lost, right? Still looking for it. Can't find it. Day nine. Ken Mattingly's got an um, EVA. He's, he's outside doing an experiment on, day, uh, experiment on day nine. He's actually on the end of a 10-foot pole where these, this experiment is being done, and he's putting it all together, retrieving it, and he's about to come back in. Charlie Duke is also outside, but his job basically is kind of a safety net for Ken. He's kind of just staying close to the craft and watching to make sure Ken doesn't get all wrapped up in the umbilical cord or something, right? He's just kind of sitting there, you know, watching and just taking in the view. He's got the big moon. It's only 50,000 miles away. He's got the Earth 180,000 miles away. He's got the sun, astronaut in front of him. I mean, he, he, he was just dazzled by just the, the picture of it all, right? So Ken's kind of wrapping up things, and suddenly, suddenly, floating out the door of the spacecraft is this small, golden something. Oh my God, is, is that the wedding ring? Charlie sees it. Charlie Duke, not Ken Mattingly. Charlie's looking at this thing. Is that, oh my God. And he takes a swing at it with his big gloved hand and misses. And out goes the wedding ring into space. Goodbye, wedding ring. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If it keeps going in that same direction, something will stop it. Ken Mattingly's head. The ring is headed back to the owner. It's, it's going back to Ken Mattingly. Mattingly is totally oblivious. He's turned the other way, and this ring is headed for his head. Charlie Duke isn't sure what to do. Do I yell at Ken? Because, but if I yell, it looks like he's headed for his head. If I yell, he might turn, and I might go flying right by him. I'll just say nothing. So he says nothing, and there goes the ring, headed for the back of Ken Mattingly's head, and sure enough, doink, does it ricochet? Does it then go flying off into the hinterland, out into outer space? No. It reverses itself perfectly. <laughs> it, it starts coming back exactly as it went. It's headed for the open door. Charlie can't believe it. He's like, wait, he has to wait three minutes. This, it took three minutes to ricochet off Ken Mattingly's head. By the way, Ken didn't hear it, didn't see it, obviously, didn't feel it, nothing. Just thoink, and back it comes towards the open door, and there's Charlie Duke going, wait for it, wait for it, wait. And as it gets to the door, snags it. Oh, unbelievable! Love conquers all! Wedding, wedding ring found. This is a touch by heaven moment, is it not? The coincidence level, it's, imp it's impossible. What just happened? Impossible. What is God saying in this moment? Is he saying love conquers all? I, that you, you will, your wedding ring will not be lost in space. Never, never, never. Is that what he's saying? Maybe. Or, <laughs> or as I think about this, or if I'm walking down the street and suddenly my wedding ring is headed for my head and doink, perhaps somebody's upset at me. Just saying perhaps, could be, maybe. Is somebody upset at Ken Mattingly? Is God upset at Ken Mattingly? I don't know. I can't judge. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know anything about the marriage. I'm saying that right now. I'm just saying let's analyze the situation. This is an amazing touch by heaven moment. God's hand is in this, is it not? But what does it mean? Is it love conquers all or, or does God have a problem with Ken? I really don't know. So I thought, well, here's what I'll do. I should Google Ken Mattingly and find out what he said about this incident. I can't find a thing. I can't find a thing. It's like, wait a minute. He's undoubtedly been interviewed about this, but I can't. I'm not saying it's not out there. I just couldn't find it. What I did find, Charlie Duke. Charlie Duke is all over the place. The guy who caught the ring, he's all over the place on the internet. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. In fact, if you go to this episode, you'll hear what he said uh, in one of his talks. Just go to episode, where are we, 65 at touchedbyheaven.net. We have a link to a YouTube video. It's, it's, it's hysterical. And that's the thing. 
Charlie Duke told this story a lot. Got applause, got laughs. He was out on the circuit. This is like one of his best stories, right? And yet, I can't find a thing about Ken Mattingly. Hasn't said a thing. Or if he has, just not as often. And I'm going, well, that's curious. If this happened to you, wouldn't you talk? This is like the greatest lost wedding ring story ever, right? So I'm wondering, well, did this marriage work out? Apparently not. I say apparently because I can't see if I can't find the word divorce, if they got a divorce. All I find is they got married in 1970. And then I find in a couple of places, ex-spoused. I think that means divorce. So I think they got married in 70. And somewhere along the way, I don't know when, I think they got a divorce, which is sad, which is always sad. I'm sorry to hear that. So I am making no judgments about what God was saying as he flung the ring at Ken Mattingly's head. Doink. I am making no judgment about what happened. He's, uh, he's an astronaut hero, right? He's an astronaut hero. Just saying that God was saying something as he flung the wedding ring at Ken Mattingly. Now then, that all said, what do we... <laughs> In fact, the more I think about it, the more I think God was giving Ken an attaboy for being a great husband as he flung the <laughs> wedding, wedding ring off the back of his head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure about this now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is our takeaway in this? I, I don't know. I just love the story. And what I want from this, I just want your lost wedding ring story. If you think it was a touch by heaven moment, if you could see God's hand in this, that somehow you got that wedding ring back and how you got it back and the story behind a wedding ring. I don't know that you can top Ken Mattingly of how he got his wedding ring back doink, uh, and into uh, Charlie Duke's hands. But I am curious about your story. Just curious. Anyway, thank you for uh, joining me for this abbreviated Touched by Heaven episode. Great story, though, isn't it? Great story. Love that story. Um, and if uh, what is your story of encounter? Please let me know. Or your story of that wedding ring that went away and God brought it back and flung it at your head or whatever. Love to hear how it turned out. Or maybe some other personal item. Maybe, maybe. Let your mind wander on this one. Get a hold of me at uh, touchedbyheaven.net. You can contact me there. Or if you want to email me directly, uh, my email address is trapper at blindguymedia.com. Trapper at blindguymedia.com. Share your story with me, won't you? Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll check in again next week here at Touched by Heaven. Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack. 